it's Bill Allen with Evolve Lab. So last week I had this request. Someone asked me, they, they were commenting on one of the videos we did where we use Dynamo to automatically create views, sheets, drop views on sheets. And they were asking, is there a way to automatically create dependent views and assign scope boxes to those dependent views? So today I thought I'd show you guys how to do that process using Dynamo. Now, first, before we do that, let's look at how we would normally do this in Revit just to show uh, just doing one of them to show kind of the manual process and, and how long it takes. So um, for those that don't know, a scope box gets associated in Revit. And in here you can um, basically it's a way to auto crop or assign a crop view to multiple views. And so to do this, you know, if you were to create a new floor plan, you would go through the process of new floor plan. You create your floor plans um, and then you would go through the process of saying, OK, right click duplicate view as a dependent. And here you would then have to go through this process, you know, level one, area A. Um, and then once I created maybe, let's say, four different areas and four different views, then I would go through this process of going to the scope box and associating this to area A. And there we are. So we have one view uh, and one scope box associated to that view. Um, but then we'd have to go through that process, you know, three more times just for this level one and then doing that for, you know, 16 floors in this case for my, my project here. So let's look how to automate this process using Dynamo. Okay, so now that we're in Dynamo, let's go ahead and take a look at this process. The first thing you need to know before you go any further is you need to make sure that you download the clockwork package. Uh, there is a duplicate as dependent node in there that is not available out of the box Dynamo. And we will be using that one node from clockwork. So before you go any further, make sure you go up to packages, search for a package and download the latest release of the clockwork package for this effort. OK, so once you have your clockwork package installed, we can go ahead and start authoring our graph. Now, the thing to note, what we're going to do is we're actually going to have basically two lines of thought here. The top part of the graph is going to be grabbing our levels, creating views and dependent views from them. The second part of the graph is going to be our scope boxes and then finally merging those two pieces of data associating the scope boxes to the levels. So what we're going to do actually is if we're going to be creating the views and um, from the levels, what we could do actually is grab all elements of category. Okay, and then so it's asking what category do we want. Now the thing to know is we could use the categories node uh, that's directly in Dynamo. So if I wanted to, I could actually come in here and look for levels and plug that in. And I could hook a watch node here. And you can see I'm already starting to get my levels. Now the thing to note about this workflow though is that if you open up your Dynamo graph, sometimes this could like switch to something else like lighting devices or other things just sometimes can get picked in this. So to kind of hard bake this, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a category by name. So we're not going to use this one, but we're going to use the categories dot by name. And then the name of the category that we're going to use, we're going to use a code block. We're just going to double click in here. Uh, that allows you to put in um, a value. So we'll say levels and we'll hook that up. And then now you can see we're getting the same result, but now this is hard baked in here. It's not changing. So that's one of the benefits of using uh, this code block and putting in levels category by name. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to start getting the name of these levels. So this is good for getting the elements themselves, but we actually want to get the names. And so we can actually do, uh, if you do level name, it's level.name, you can hook this up and you can see now we get something a little more legible and readable. Uh, and this is going to be really good for naming our views and our dependent views here in just a moment. So this is how we grab our levels uh, within our Revit project to start creating the views from. Okay, so now that we have our levels, next what we want to do is start grabbing the scope boxes in our project. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, what's easier is we can just do a copy of um, this all elements of category. We'll just do a copy paste of this, bringing this below. And here we can say scope boxes. And then now if we hook up the watch node to these elements, you'll see that we have, we're starting to grab the four scope boxes in here, but we don't really see 
uh, what they are. So what we can do is we can actually get a element dot get parameter value by name. And then so if we hook these elements up here, we can then do a, uh, just create a code block double clicking on the canvas. And if we look for the parameter value name, in here it'll actually start now, you'll see if we hook this up to our watch node, there we are, we're starting to get our scope boxes that are in our project. Now mine are kind of organized, uh, not alphanumeric as you can see here. And so if yours are, if yours are organized correctly, you won't have to worry about this next uh, piece. Uh, but for mine, I have to go ahead and organize these to make sure that they're sorting A, B, C, D, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a process here to kind of sort and order these. So to do that, I'm going to use the list.sortByKey function. Okay, so here what I can do is I can actually hook up these elements um, to this list in the key being the view name. And you'll see now if I sort these uh, scope boxes in here, look at this, now it's actually sorted area A, B, C, D. So that's how you can just quickly um, make sure that any, L, any data that's in your project is getting sorted uh, appropriately. You can do that using this list sort by key. Okay, so now we're getting our scope boxes. We have our uh, levels by name. Um, so what I'm gonna do actually, let's just go ahead and grab this watch node um, so we can start to see what's happening up here at the top. You'll see now we have level one uh, through level 16. Um, but what I wanna do now is starting to get those dependent views uh, created and associated to these levels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start creating this string. Um, if, you, if you just do a right click, you can do a search on your canvas for string. And then in here, what we can do, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna start creating um, our area. So this will be like area A, area B, area C, area D, uh, et cetera. And we could actually start to use some of this data down here from our scope boxes, but for now, just for uh, being able to keep this a little cleaner, I'm gonna keep these two strings uh, separated. So next, um, what I wanna do is I'm going to actually use the string.split. And what you can do is hook your string in here and then it's gonna ask, how do you wanna split your string? Uh, what is what is splitting your, your string? And so to do that, what we can actually just do is drop in uh, another string node. And the thing that's splitting in it actually is just a hard return. So all we have to do in here is just put in a return and that's good enough. And then if I click here and you'll see if we look at the information, it's organized in that area A, B, C, D. And now what we want to do is we want to start aggregating that data with uh, these levels, okay? So what I could actually do is drop in a plus symbol. And this is a great way to just start merging um, the two pieces of data, kind of concatenating it. Um, but the concatenate works a little bit differently. In my opinion, this is a little more intuitive. Um, so I really like uh, this workflow. So you can see here, I'm getting level one, area A. What I really want is I want this dash in here. Like that. So that way I'm getting level one, area A, B, C, D. But the thing to note here right now is this is going level one, area A, level two, area B. So what we have to actually do is we have to use this technique called cross product. And what that's gonna do is it's going to actually take all the data from this list and cross pollinate it with this list. So if you actually do this uh, right click on here and on the plus node and you go to lacing and change this to cross product, look what we get. It actually now has broken it up for us where it actually will have level one area A, level one area B, level one area C, etc. And then moving on to the next, that's exactly how we want our data organized. So now if I hook that up to my watch node, we'll get uh, a similar kind of uh, action happening here. Okay, so now that we have our dependent 
names being associated to our level, what we want to do is now we want to start creating uh, those dependent views and the views uh, that this data is going to push and name them in. What we're actually going to do is grab the floor plan by level node. And so what this will do is it's actually going to um, create a floor plan uh, given the levels that go into it. So what we're actually probably going to start doing now is instead of having our uh, graph set to automatic, let's switch that to manual. And we can go ahead and hook up the level node into the uh, level input. And then what I want to do is I actually want to start naming uh, the levels that come out of here. Okay. So I'm getting the, the level name, and that can help start to inform that, right? So if I have level one, level two, uh, et cetera. Um, so what I could do actually is I can use the element.setParameter by name node, and I can hook those, those views in here. And for the parameter name, I can use view name. And for the value, I can actually use this level name node right here. I can plug that right in there. And then that level name can help inform the view name. So if the level is called level one, it will inform the view to be called level one. Now this will be the parent view, and then we'll create our dependent views from this parent view. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the uh, duplicate as dependent view from the clockwork package. Um, and you can actually go ahead and expand uh, the clockwork package under Revit, Views, and then we're gonna go to View, and it's this uh, Duplicate as Dependent, okay? Now, the, the, the node we wanna plug in here actually is our uh, floor plan view by level, all right? Because what we're doing is we're gonna be creating our dependent views from the parent view, right? Right up here, which is that floor plan, and these are the dependent views, and then it's gonna be asking us the name, all right? So now this is where this information right here can get fed into our view duplicate as dependent, and that will help inform and create the dependent views associated to that parent view. Okay, and then lastly, what we wanna do is we then want to have the scope boxes be assigned to these dependent views. And the way we're actually gonna do that is we're gonna actually use this element set parameter by name node again. This is a really popular uh, node in this graph. So we're actually going to use the element dot set parameter by name. And then the elements that we plug in there are going to be our dependent views. Um, the parameter name is going to be scope box. And then the value that we put in here is actually gonna be this sorted list right here, okay? So the thing to note really carefully is we're actually gonna use, when we use this list, if you're using the list sort by key, you're gonna use the sorted keys, um, or excuse me, the sorted list uh, output that's right here uh, into that value. And so that's going to assign the appropriate value for that scope box to that dependent view's name. All right, so now that we have our element set parameter by name, we have our dependent views being plugged into element, scope box name for parameter name, and then the value coming from our key here. Uh, again, I'm doing this because of uh, sorting reasons. Uh, because of this, this is a little less intuitive, I'm gonna be honest, but it's imperative and important for the process to work. For our value, um, I'm actually gonna set my level to two. If you're using a sorting, you'll probably have to do the same thing, and then, for our element set parameter by name, for our lacing, we're gonna change this to longest. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna organize the data as it's pushing through this set parameter by name, such that the right data from level two of this data gets pushed in here, and then it's grabbing the longest list of information from the dependent views to apply this to, is how this is working in a nutshell. Okay, so I have my uh, Dynamo graph here. Um, I have Revit exposed. Uh, what, I, what you can see here is I don't have any floor plans created under construction set. And if I go ahead and hit run on this, what's going to happen is it's creating the floor plans, it's creating the dependent views, it's associating the uh, nomenclature of the dependent views that we 
had in here, this level one, area A, B, C, D, etc. To those dependent views, uh, it's then uh, setting the parameter name for the scope boxes associated to this element set parameter by name. And so that's what all the task it's doing. In my project, I have 16 levels. So it's associating and creating uh, four dependent views per level times 16, naming the parent view and the dependent views and associating the scope boxes to those dependent views. So that's what's going on right now uh, in this graph. So now it just completed here. Let's go ahead and open up floor plan. You can see new. Uh, here's all of our level ones created uh, based on the syntax that we gave it. If I open this up, I have level one, area A, level one, area B, et cetera. And then I have the same uh, for each one of these levels here. Then now if I go to any one of these dependent views, look at this, scope box, area B, scope box, area C, et cetera. So we actually have this connection between the scope box parameter and its respective dependent views based on the organization and how we push this. So that is a quick tip. I know this uh, graph is uh, actually not too complex, surprisingly, and uh, it's repeatable. It's something that we could use on every project and be able to create those level uh, view names, the dependent views, and associating the scope box. Again, this was a request from someone online. I hope this is helpful for you. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that uh, like and subscribe button as we try to push these out at least once a week for you. That way you get notified. I uh, hope you guys have a great day, a blessed week, and we'll talk to you guys later. Take care.